Hello, viewers. You're welcome to our lectures on biological techniques. Today's lecture will be on the techniques in entomology and arachnology. We're going to look at the use of various traps for a collection of insects and arachnids. And we're also going to look at rearing as a method for collecting insects and arachnids. So we want to look at the various types of traps. There are a lot of traps that are used for collecting insects and arachnids. And these traps will be discussed individually. Now, the insects and arachnids are collected with the following traps. Pitfall traps, light traps, yellow pan traps, sticky traps, paper band traps, butterfly traps, pheromone traps, suction traps, the window pane traps, and the melee traps are used for the collection of insects and arachnids. Now we want to look at the pitfall traps, how the pitfall traps are used to collect insects and arachnids. Now the pitfall traps, just as the name implies, are used to trap and catch flightless ground living insects and arachnids, especially beetles, the ground beetles and the top chookies and the cockroaches, the crickets, the spiders, the silifugids, the pseudoscorpions, the harvest man and mites that live on or in the soil. The insects and arachnids that are found crawling on the ground, either in the forest or in other places, are usually collected with the pitfall traps, just as the name implies, it consists of a pit. It consists of containers such as small plastic buckets, plant pores, glass jars, or jam tins that are buried in the soil level with the rim so that insects attracted to them will fall in. So these uh, buckets or plant pores or plant jars are dug into the ground and they are buried. That's the, the rim of the buckets are uh, left at the, uh, at the same level with the ground surface and unsuspected insects crawl and mistakenly fall into these uh, buckets and are then later harvested. Once inside, it is difficult for them to get out. It is difficult for the insects to get out from that trap. A killing agent and preservative such as ethyl glycol should be placed in traps that are not empty daily. These traps are usually empty daily. Uh, they are kept for 24 hours. The next day, they are being checked to remove insects that have been caught. But where the traps are not checked daily, then killing agent or a present preservative such as ethyl glycol is uh, placed in the traps in order to preserve them when they are trapped inside the, the pitfall trap. Now this is the procedure for the pre preparation of the pitfall trap. First, a hole is being dug on the ground, okay, uh, with a spade or a shovel. Now, after digging the hole, the bucket is then placed inside the hole or the pit that has been dug. Then after that, the pit, uh, the sides of the bucket are properly covered. And this now uh, makes it possible for insects that are crawling in the forest floor to crawl mistakenly into the trap, into the pit. And once inside, they can't get out. Some spiders and uh, other insects like the, this some spiders and insects like the beetles and other crawling insects are caught in this method by using the pitfall trap. In some cases, baits are also applied to attract uh, these insects and arachnids and such uh, 
baited pitfall traps are very effective. Okay, so attractive bait can be placed in the bottom of the bucket and this will increase the drawing power of the trap. And uh, the baits include spoiled fruits, vegetables, excrement, or meat. These are used to lure these insects and arachnids into the pitfall traps. It is expected that we remove the insects that we catch each morning. Each morning, the insects and the arachnids that are caught in the traps are usually removed from the traps. The pitfall traps also have other uses. Apart from using the traps to catch insects and arachnids, they are also used in other fields of biology. Pitfall traps are also used in hepatological studies to collect hepatofauna. It's used to collect uh, the amphibians and reptiles. So when harvesting the pitfall traps, it's very important we are very careful because um, some other organisms apart from the insects and arachnids can fall in. Some snakes can mistakenly fall into the trap, tortoises and the lizards and many other reptiles and amphibians, even frogs can fall into the trap. And hepatologists also use these traps to collect insects and arachnids. Then even in mammalogy, it is used to collect uh, uh, in, uh, mammals, particularly small mammals, like the rodents and others that are found walking on the forest floor. Other crawling arthropods like crabs, millipedes, and centipedes are also collected through this method. I want to look at the second type of trap, which is the light trap. I want to look at the light traps, how they are being set up and how they are used to collect insects and arachnids. This is the most common method of collecting nocturnal specimens that hide or rest during the day in places where they are unlikely to be seen. The light traps used to collect nocturnal insects, insects that are usually very active at night. Examples of such insects include beetles, cockroaches, crickets, mayflies, morts, and stoneflies are collected through the use of the light trap. Large numbers of insects and a wide variety of species can be caught at night using light traps. The simplest light trap consists of a suspended white sheet or cloth with a light hung in front of it. Okay, it consists of a cloth. The cloth is hung and then uh, the light is then hung in front of the cloth at night and that enables it to uh, be very efficient. The principle that's been used is the fact that uh, these nocturnal insects are usually attracted to light. Sometimes even our security lights or bulbs outside we see insects and are insects flying around them and some of them fall to the ground or are attached to the wall. So it's that principle that's being applied in the light trap to catch these insects. Specimens that settle on the sheet can be collected in killing bottles or with an aspirator. Now here is a setup of the, the light trap of having a white sheet or cloth and then a light bulb is hung in front of it. And when the bulb is put on at night, the insects come around the light. And as they hover around, around the light and they get attached to the clothes, some of them fall down on the white sheet and then are then collected for preservation for future studies. A bucket can also be used, okay? So light traps, can also be made with a battery operated lantern, a large metal funnel, and a white mouth jar, a, or a large fruit juice can, or even a bucket. You can use even a bucket to preserve, to prepare a light trap. Now, this is uh, a typical example of a locally prepared light trap using a bucket. The bulb is hung above the white bucket at night 
and then when the bulb is put on, the insects that play around this light eventually fall into the bucket and are being collected. So the, this light trap is made with light bulb and a white bucket. It's also very efficient to collect insects and arabis. The next type of trap we want to look at is the yellow pan trap, or they are called the yellow pan traps. The yellow pan traps, just as the name implies, are mainly to collect aphids. They can be made from trays measuring about 40 centimeters in diameter and painted yellow. The, the trays are usually uh, 40 cent, about 40 centimeters in diameter and are painted yellow or may have a yellow coloration, a yellow color. These uh, trays are filled with water containing a little detergent to break the surface tension of the uh, insects. That's you know, to prevent insects from floating or walking on the surface of the water, detergents are added in order to break that surface tension. Now, this is uh, a yellow pan trap that's set up to catch insects, the aphids. The next type of trap or traps are called the sticky traps. The sticky traps. These traps uh, consist of uh, a whiteboard, a piece of tape or pane of glass, piece of wire net or cylinder or other objects, often painted yellow is coated with a sticky substance and suspended from a tree branch or other convenience object. So these uh, substances, the whiteboard, a piece of tape, pane of glass, piece of wire net or cylinder, actually painted yellow and then coated with a sticky substance and, sus and suspended on the tree branch for insects to uh, land on them. Insects landing on the sticky substance are unable to extricate themselves, extricate themselves. They are unable to extricate themselves. The sticky material is later dissolved with a suitable solvent, usually toluene, xylene, ethyl acetate, or various combination of, combinations of these and the insects are washed first in cellulosol and then in xylem. The next type of trap we want to look at, the next set of traps are the paper band traps. And these traps are usually to mimic the tree trunks or the backs. Insects and arachnids that live in crevices in the back of trees and species that migrate up tree trunks can be caught using paper band traps. Okay, the paper band traps is used to mimic the backs of trees so that uh, these insects can be caught. Strips of brown corrugated paper about uh, 15 centimeters wide are wrapped twice around the trunk of a tree and fastened with a, a string. Now, uh, the corrugated, the brown corrugated paper can be improvised by using the inside of a carton. When you tear off the surface of a packaging carton, that corrugated brown paper can be used to prepare the paper band traps. And it's very effective in collecting these insects that hide themselves in the crevices of the tree trunks. The tunnels of the paper provide a refuge for spiders and insects each band should be carefully removed and placed in a plastic bag containing a weight of cotton wool moistened with a few drops of chloroform to anesthetize the insects. The paper strips, the paper strip is then examined over a tray whilst pulling the layers apart. The next uh, type of trap we want to look at is the butterfly traps or they are the butterfly traps. These traps are specially designed to capture fast flying butterflies such as the infolids and characters that dwell in tree canopies and cannot otherwise be reached. The butterflies that dwell in tree canopies 
that are usually found on top of trees that cannot be easily reached are uh, caught with the butterfly traps. The butterflies are attracted to a bait in the trap. A bait is being introduced on the trap that attracts these butterflies to the trap. The butterfly trap is made from a vertical gore cylinder closed at the top with a landing platform at the bottom. It has a vertical gauze cylinder that's closed at the top and has a landing platform. A gap is left between the bottom edge of the cylinder and the platform. The bait is placed in a small bowl positioned in the center of the platform. The bait is placed on a small bowl. Now, what happens? The trap is hoisted over a high tree branch with a rope and lowered to remove the cut. Now, this is uh, the butterfly trap. The butterfly trap, like we said, is made up of a fabric gauze cylinder and a bait that's placed on a bowl and the landing platform. The butterfly that's been attracted by the bait flies and lands on this platform, walks in and feeds on the bait and after feeding on the bait it now flies up instead of walking out so as it flies up it gets trapped in the fabric or cylinder the next type of traps we want to look at are the pheromone traps the pheromone traps the pheromone traps make use of the chemical substances that are emitted by insects the pheromone traps are chemical substances emitted by insects for communication. Sexual pheromones can be used in traps to attract specimens of the opposite sex. Live females of some species like emperor moths that are confined in a trap will attract males over a long distance. It seems to attract the the insects of the opposite sex. Now here is the foramen trap consisting of the uh, chemical, the pheromone that's used to attract the insect. And once they perceive the smell of the chemical, they are attracted and they are being caught. The next type of trap we want to look at is the suction trap or the suction traps. The suction traps. The suction traps draw specimens into a receptacle or a net by creating a downward drought. <clears throat> they are used to collect <clears throat> ballooning spiders and small flying insects, such as flies, aphids, and wasps. Now here's the suction trap. The suction trap creates a downward pool. It creates a, an air current that drags insects into a, the container dumps down in the trap. So it's a suction device. It draws insects into a collected container. The next type of trap we want to look at is the window pane trap or the interception trap. Now, how is this trap being used? This trap consists of a vertical pane of glass, plastic or gas place, uh, plastic or gauze placed across the flight path of insects above a trough of soapy water or ethylene glycol. Insects flying into the pane drop into the trough below. This method is particularly suitable for heavy bodied insects such as beetles. Now, this is a typical. Uh, uh, window pane trap or the interception trap consisting of a gauze or glass interceptor, okay, and then a tray of soapy water or a slave like coal. Now, here the tray of, uh, contains the soapy, the soapy water or slave like coal, and this is a pane or a glass. The insects it is hung on the branches of trees in the forest. And as the insects fly and hit this pane, they fall into the soapy water and are trapped and data collected later. 
The next type of trap is called the malice trap. The malice trap. Large number of specimens with will be taken with very little effort by using this method. Malice traps are mainly used to catch bees, wasps, and flies. This type of trap resembles a tent with two open sides. A vertical gauze wall in the middle intercepts flying insects, which are directed upwards into a killing bottle fixed to the highest point of the trap. Now here is the picture of the window pane trap. The, the sorry, the mailis trap. The mailis trap consists of a tent-like substance. The insects get in through this part of the net and then are trapped. They're collected with a killing bottle. It has a gauze roof that prevents the insects from flying out and they are collected in the killing bottle. The next uh, aspect of the collection of insects we want to look at is rearing. Most insects and arachnids can only be identified in the adult state as miniature ones are fully known. The miniature ones of such insects are not really good for identification. So to do that, they are reared. Thus, if only live immature specimens are available, they can be reared to the adult stage for identification. Appropriate conditions are required, such as temperature, humidity, and food. The methods that are used for rearing insects and arachnids include rearing in cages, rearing in aquaria, and rearing in emergent boxes. Some insects are reared in cages. Some aquatic insects, like the mosquito larva and pupa, the mayfly larva and pupa, the, uh, the caddis fly larva and pupa, and the dragonfly larva and pupa are reared in aquaria to metamorphose into the adult form. And some are reared in emergent boxes. Thank you very much for watching. We urge you to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos on biological techniques. Subsequent videos will be on techniques and techniques for the preservation of insects and arachnids.